which is kind of fun. Um, yeah. What is going on, everybody? I'm Adam Johnson, and this is Cover Band Confidential. The video you are about to watch is an excerpt from an interview we did with Jordan Olds, better known as Guarcinio Hall, from the show Two Minutes to Late Night. If you're not familiar, Two Minutes to Late Night is a comedy sketch show geared towards the metal community and is known for their outrageous covers. <laughs> They've even set up a series of quarantine covers featuring musicians from bands like Mastodon, Slipknot, Guar, and a bunch of others. This conversation is primarily about how they come up with those songs as well as the arrangement and the instrumentation for them. If you'd like to check out the full interview, it is on the Cover Band Confidential Podcast. We'll put a link in the show notes. Just want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you're liking what you are seeing, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. We post new videos here every single Friday, all geared towards musicians learning how to advance in their music career. With that out of the way, let's get into it. I really appreciate the way that you guys kind of arrange things. Like how does, how do you guys approach a song like when something like that comes up? What is the thought? thumbprint of the sound that you guys are going for most of the covers i think only two or three of them are not composed and arranged by me it's usually just me putting it together it makes sense for me to kind of start it off for the show i'm in the writer's room and then i can play instruments so i will like build it and then kind of tie it into the show. And since I kind of understand the way Mutoid Man works or kind of with how their sound works, the start of each cover is just that we're using concert tuning, which is just half step down and then the top string is dropped all the way to like A sharp. And I think that tuning kind of adds like a, like a level of like, all right, well, we have to transform the song to be able to play it like this. Right. And the goal is to try to use the chonky octave that's created in the top two strings as like, let's try to put the riff in there. Yeah. So I'm like, that should be like the main source of the melody or like, can we add harmonies? I kind of always just like taking big ass tunings that, that are chunky and I like trying to try to play them fast because I think it's, it's counterintuitive, but it makes it like a little bit of a challenge. And then, you know, you throw in riffs that like might sound good in like a gallop or like as a breakdown or like as hits like bringing in some converge style of business i think it's like fun to try to transform a song and keep the spirit of it it takes forever to build <laughs> most of the covers and then once i arrange it and send it off then kind of everyone takes it and makes it like their own thing and it becomes really fun Talking about the tuning, I think a really great example of that for you guys was doing Hoffer Teacher with Gene Gleason, using that the the lower tuning during that intro riff. That that's really where it stood out for me because like you basically changed the the progression there at least on the intro. It was loyal to the song itself, but like was unique enough where it was it stood out. Yeah, the riff is different than the original a little bit, but it kind of feels the same also like it's got the that's i think like that one's such an anomaly yeah it's it's a hot mess of a song like musically was that 13 hits during like the solo break yeah it sucked um <laughs> i think we planned on simplifying it and then didn't or something i don't know i re i remember we like i rehearsed it with mutoid man doing like the lead guitar and steve trying to you know get ready to just sing and I think we were going to simplify it, but uh, when Gina showed up and like knew, it's it's one of those things where when we're doing the show live, we kind of have no idea how the how it's going to sound or what how it's going to work until we're actually all on the stage together. And then it's just like, I right, we hope this is going to sound good. I don't know. With the quarantine covers and that kind of stuff coming up, like what do you guys have on the agenda? Like, can you divulge? Will you divulge? And like, you know, what do you have in well, the pipeline? The weird thing about the quarantine covers is that was uh, a plan before the lockdown. I think because we planned to do it before uh, the necessity of doing it. I think that that's why it feels a little different than like other quarantine covers because we were already trying to figure out how to kind of still have the vibe of our live cover songs in it because that's always the hardest part of our show it's so hard to get someone who's like hey uh are you gonna be in new york and 
available, not playing a concert for some reason, yeah. and uh, like also, and just like everyone's available, and like it's got to be on one of the days that like Vitus doesn't have like an insane concert. Like we have to book it out really hard. It's fucking hard. So we were trying to figure out if we could do the covers. Uh, like this while we continue to try to figure out sort of what the future of the show is going to be because the Patreon was at the time was only to fund this first season of the show to just have an example of like this is what it'll be like the plan was never to continue the show like that because we care about quality that has to be like the way the show is like the first season that's got to be the bottom it can't be worse than that we never want to make anything that's worse than that uh, ever so we're just trying to figure out other things that we can do and right now it's about covers and making them fun because we can still do that we can still yeah. have a ton of different musicians that you wouldn't expect like not all of them are from the metal world which is kind of fun um yeah <laughs>